Hi guys, it's Marin. It is now Wednesday morning and I'm just waking up in the new place. It is nice and light outside. I let myself sleep in until about 8.45 this morning, which is definitely really late for me. But I was so tired after yesterday and I ended up staying up late. I feel like just by the nature of the situation. But this is definitely not normal for me to be getting up this late in the day. If you missed what happened yesterday, I basically packed up everything I owned and moved over to a new house sit in the Rocky Mountains. I did vlog that day, so I'll link that in the comments below. We got it all out. Woohoo! Still have my beautiful little blemish on my face. I'm about to get up though and wash my face, make the bed, and then basically I'm just going to focus today on unpacking and sort of settling into this place really the only thing i like unpacked unpacked was the fridge and freezer stuff that needed to go immediately in there so i just washed my face put on my birkenstocks because of my foot issues i need to wear them even inside and now i'm gonna attempt to figure out this little guy here so i can make some coffee as this appears to be the way that they make coffee which is kind of fun to see how different people do different things like this in their house also interesting they seem to keep their coffee grounds in the freezer which is something i've never seen before let me know though if you guys uh know of that being a thing and i think i figured out how to heat this up uh i actually used to be a barista in a coffee shop in college so I know a little bit of what I'm doing here. I don't have a tamp of any kind, so I'm just kind of doing that with my finger now. But this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about when in past videos I've talked about decision fatigue because every time you go somewhere new, you're really just figuring out everything all over again. And it does take energy and sort of mental brain power to do that. A lot of the time what I end up doing for these situations is actually just googling the name of the machine. You can usually see the brand of the machine really easily on there and then you try to just find the model number, google it, and usually you can find the user manual pretty easily and that can save a lot of time here for sure. Mm, something's happening. Oh, the microwave's done. So I thought this was going to be a milk grinder and I poured these coffee beans in here because I wanted to make stronger coffee than what I made in here. It just tastes really weak and bad. Um, but now I'm kind of wondering if it's something else because this doesn't look like it could grind anything. I'm now going to be picking out these beans. I think this is actually for milk foaming, which actually makes me really excited because I didn't know if they had a way to do that here. It doesn't seem to work the wand on their espresso machine. Let's see if I hit the button. What happened? Okay. So this is definitely some kind of a foamer because this whiskey looking thing starts to move and foam when I do that. So I pulled all the beans back out and I'm going to foam some milk now. I have these beans too, which are whole dark roast beans, which I was trying to roast, but I haven't found a way to grind those up yet. Guys, I was right. It was a milk frother, so we can make a nice cappuccino now. Look at that. And I figured this out too the second time around. This looks way better than the first time. It looks way darker. The reason I showed you guys all these steps for just making coffee is because I want you to see that it really is an adaptation process at the beginning of the house sit. It a little bit feels like a TV show where they just like throw you into an unknown situation and it's like, oh, survive and see how you do. Except obviously way, way, way more mild because I am not in the jungle defending myself and also I still have Google. As far as food goes, I'm making eggs and you can probably hear them sizzling in the background of this video. I just threw in some leftover cauliflower rice and chickpeas and then also some greens and onion that was here at the house sit. So I love eggs. I feel like you can throw a bunch of things in a pan and it generally ends up tasting really good. I'm also going to make a slice of toast if I can find their toaster. So I basically just did the same thing here that I did in the fridge, which is to move some of their stuff together and stack it a little bit more so that I can make a little space for myself here so that I can get stuff up off the counter. In this place, it's particularly important because this house is actually on the market, so there could be a house showing while I'm here. So I'm going to just unpack these bags. Basically, I just have a couple cans of soup. I have my vitamins, I have a handful of spices and some 
extra coffee that I lug around everywhere just in case. I also have the ground beans just in case I'm in a situation where I need ground beans because I do love my coffee. Cans of soup though are kind of like the ultimate healthy dinner that takes no effort. You can keep these at a lot of different temperatures. It's kind of like the granola bar equivalent of a dinner, I feel like, and I've had these many a times even at room temperature camping. I guess I'd rather have that than go get fast food. So I'm just gonna stack these in here. Sometimes I'll even just put the entire bag up there. What I'll do this time, I think, because it's high up so I can see the stuff that I have is I'll unpack the bags, fold them up, and then I'll just tuck them in here so that when I leave in a couple weeks, I can just put everything right back into that bag but sometimes I'll actually just put the entire bag in there. Because I unpack and repack so many times, I'm very aware of everything I have. So like here, for example, I just left my own bag right here in the shelf. And so when I leave, I can literally just pull up the sides of the bag and then take it with me, leave everything else how it is. Just got dressed now. I'm wearing these blue denim shorts from Levi's. And then I'm wearing this tank top. I actually designed this tank top in college as a sort of summer project. If you look really close, you can see my name in the design here. This was a pen and ink design that I did that I had printed up on some t-shirts and then I sold them at like a craft fair in the summer. Before I did any unpacking and after eating breakfast, I sat outside here with my journal while I was on a call. I have an online counselor, coach person that I talk to about once a week. She's remote, so the nice thing about that is that I can take her anywhere. So I've actually been talking to her for a couple years and it's really helped me to be with the same person the entire time. Oh my gosh, I have to show you guys my view right now. I'm watching these beautiful hummingbirds at the feeder. I didn't even know hummingbirds could live in the Rocky Mountains. It's really important to still have social support in place. So just because you have a nomadic or sort of untraditional lifestyle where you're moving around a lot, it doesn't mean that you don't need social support and having that from people that are at the actual location where you are can be a lot more difficult when you move around a lot or you're new to an area. And so basically the way to get this then is to have it remotely. Like I have a couple really trusted friends and family members that I know I can always call in an emergency. I am starting to have people here that I can call, even if they're not always that close to me, depending on where exactly my house is at the time. And then I also have um, therapy that I do once a week with the same person that I've had since Santa Fe and through all the moving around that I've been doing. So this is something to really consider if you're either considering sort of traveling or house sitting or even just moving to a different city. It takes a while to really establish this in person in a new place and so in the meantime these sort of remote support options and your sort of remote friend network can really make a big difference. One of the things I'll do is anytime that I'm doing a little bit longer drive I'll just text a bunch of people and be like hey I'm doing this drive like give me a call when you have a chance basically. I'll just kind of throw it out to people that way and then whoever wants to call me can. Um, another way that I like to do it is with a couple of people I have regular phone dates so it's like always at the same time every week and that way we know that we'll be able to talk at least a little bit every week and that works really well with other people who have a little bit more of a consistent schedule themselves. But either way, regardless, I think this social support network is so huge and really makes a big difference in how sustainable what I'm doing here feels because it really is a human need. We are social animals. Okay, so what I've been working on now is getting all my stuff put away in this closet. So these folks were nice enough to leave me this really big closet. It has two sides, but I can only show one side at once because of the sliding doors. But anyway, they left me this giant closet to put my things in. And so I'm just kind of unpacking those things or at least getting them put away. One of the contingencies with this house sit was that this house is on the market and so you need to be ready at a moment's notice to leave and have the house be really neat if there needs to be a showing of the house. I can just go down the street to a coffee shop so it's not really a big deal for me to need to go somewhere. Also, there's going to be times probably where I'm not even in the house or here during the day where there might be a showing, but because of that, I do need to be really neat while I'm here. Normally, when I have a little bit more space, I would kind of spread out my things um, because, you know, it's hard when you live out of bags and suitcases. You know, it's not like pulling out a drawer and being able to see all your things. Like, you really have to open things up and kind of dig around. And especially if you're in a rush when you're doing that or you don't know where something is and you're trying to find it more quickly, you can kind of really quickly end up with a really messy situation. So a lot of the times 
if I have more space, I'll kind of like lay things out and spread myself out a little bit more if there's no drawers to put things in for me. But in this case, because of that whole um, house showing contingency, I'm going to be trying to stay more organized right from the start because I don't want it to be so stressful on me if there does have to be a house showing. So I've basically just been trying to figure out the best way to stack things in the closet so that I can just close the door. There's going to be enough things like in the kitchen and the bathroom that you can't really have put away most of the time. Like one of the things is if you're showing your house, you have to have your soap put away. Like you can't even have soap or towels on the counter. And those are things that are pretty much going to be last minute things every single time for me. There's really nothing I can do about that. But in the meantime, I can prepare by keeping my other things put away. Also, I mean, it does make everything look nicer when your stuff isn't just like out and spilling out everywhere. And it can definitely help make things feel less cluttered. Oh my gosh, guys, I think I'm gonna have to take a nap. I'm so tired. I'm having one of those days. Do you ever have these days where you're just reading something and you read it like four times and it just goes like in one ear, right out the other one, and you honestly have no idea what you just read? I think it's gonna be honestly like a better use of my time to take a nap and then come back to doing stuff like this or keep doing stuff like unpacking that's a little bit more mindless and takes less uh, cognitive or mental effort right now because reading which I already am not like a big reader and I'm definitely not the most focused person when it comes on those kind of tasks but today it just feels really truly impossible I always try to be kind to myself the day after moving I know I'm just gonna be more tired than normal it's just kind of the way things roll just mentally, physically, it's a lot of effort and emotionally it can be a little bit of a drain too just to get used to a new place. Like even if you think about how much effort it took just to figure out how to make coffee this morning, I'm just trying to be kind to myself. I also have some bu really busy days coming up in the next few days. So because of that too, I really want to um, take it easy today while I can. So Molly and I just did a little cat nap here, no pun intended, but if you guys are wondering how all of this moving and settling in works with having a job online, the answer is I basically do the bare minimum on my moving days and then I play catch up for a few days after. So me and Molly are becoming fast friends over here. It's funny how some cats are just so willing to sit on your lap and snuggle and then other ones really don't seem to care what you do at all. I feel like cats have just such a big range in personalities. It's kind of fun to be meeting new ones. The last thing I wanted to show you guys today is a few of my house sitting responsibilities. So one of them is going to be watering the plants and there's both inside and outside plants at this house. Some of them are on a schedule of being watered daily and some of them are every other day and some of them are weekly. So I'm trying to keep track and not kill any plants here. And then, of course, also feeding the cats is a big part of the responsibilities and playing with the cats. Anyways, I know today was more of a chill day, just settling in, but I wanted you guys to see this side of house sitting as well, especially for those of you that might be interested in doing this yourself. Don't forget to hit the like button down below under this video and subscribe to the channel so you see future videos of mine. We have lots of adventures coming up. Anyways, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, YouTube!